<laughs> Hello, my name is Evan Brand. I'm a student of Certificate 3 Captive Animals at Old Motave. I'm doing a healthcare check of Cooper the uh, Labradoodle today. Um, before I start, I'm just going to identify a few work health and safety risks involved in um, the capture and restraint of Cooper. Um, so, some risks include the animal escaping, uh, the animal causing injury to me by biting or scratching, um, <clears throat> safe handling practices such as uh, crush injuries like this cabinet falling over, this cabinet falling over on top of Cooper. Uh, also, like when I'm transporting Cooper around, rather than picking him up, because he's, he's not heavy, but he could do damage to my back if I didn't do it properly. I'll just use a lead and we'll just walk around together to get him to where I want to go. Um, <clears throat> also, another work health and safety risk at the moment is the COVID-19 virus. So I'm wearing a mask to minimise the risk of me spreading it to other staff members at the facility. I'm also triple vaccinated. Um, and yeah. So ways to uh, minimize the risk of Cooper escaping include shutting all the doors and windows. And um, yeah, and just keeping on the leash. Uh, to minimize crash injuries, it's just don't let him sort of run around the room and run into things and make sure that all the heavy stuff is secured against the wall. I'm wearing lace-up boots to prevent the chance of falling over on uneven surfaces. <clears throat> to minimise the risk of Cooper causing harm to me by biting and scratching, I'll just use a, a gentle and polite demeanour with Cooper and won't force him to do anything out of his, um, out of his normal behaviour range and just keep watching him to see if he's uncomfortable. If he's uncomfortable, he could possibly attack me, but it is unlikely. Um, so, as part of our healthcare check, I'm going to take Cooper's heart rate. And this is best done uh, on his femoral artery to give the most accurate uh, representation of his heartbeat. His femoral artery is located just inside his thigh, sort of where the uh, leg meets the abdomen. So, we're going to do it. So, once you can feel the femoral artery, you get a bit of a grip on it and you can use your thumb outside on his abdomen to sort of stabilise. I just wait till it's comfortable. Uh, and then you, you count the amount of beats over 15 seconds and you multiply that by 4. So you get a reading at 60. That was 24, out of 15, that's 96 beats a minute, which is pretty normal for a dog this size, it's usually between 60 and 120. So now I'm going to administer an healthcare treatment to Cooper. His nails are getting quite long, so I'm going to clip them back. Um, as you can see here, uh, it's, it goes from like a lighter part of the nail to a darker part. The darker part is called the quick and actually has a blood supply there. So I need to avoid cutting there. So we just gradually cut on a 45 degree angle back. Just a little bit. Bit by bit. Uh, this can be quite a stressful procedure for dogs. So we get them in a comfortable position, like next to their bed. And then you just go for it, as described. You get one finger on the paw, on the pad, sorry. And then
You need to make sure you get the um, dew claws as well. Comfortable there, mate. Doing a good job, Cooper. Thanks for being such a good patient. So Cooper's an extremely old dog. Um, he's in relatively good health for his age. He maintains a healthy body weight, a good body condition score, and is uh, quite active for his age as well. Still loves a run, which is always reassuring. Um, the only thing to note is he gets a build up of gunk or like debris in his eyes, which are regularly cleaned, and also his ears. And, um, he also recently got attacked by a dog about three or four weeks ago. It's a bull mastiff cross Great Dane. So he's received two weeks course of antibiotics for the um, the lacerations and scars he had, so he didn't get infected. And they're on his chest, but they've all recovered quite well. And on his neck, but they've all recovered quite well. So we've been monitoring that. So um, I'm just gonna mention to my supervisor to just Keep monitoring him for um, any pain or discomfort and just to keep clearing out his eyes. I'm sure you can see a bit better. You can see that he's, he's quite blind, about 40% blind in his eyes, but he's still functioning well and he's still a happy dog.